Hi everyone, I'm David and this is Gian and um, we're both engineers here at Civil Maps. Do you want to introduce yourself, Gian? Yeah, of course. Um, hi, I'm Gian. Um, I'm a researcher from the R&D department. Uh, mainly I do localization and sensor fusion and civil maps. I'm very excited to host this webinar with David. Thanks, John. And uh, this is my first time doing the webinar with uh, with him. Last time it was Scott and myself, um, and just reintroducing myself. I am um, basically the technical PM for our dev kit and data pipeline teams. Um, so all of our data that comes in from various sensors, from our customers, and from our own hardware, um, I work to get that data normalized and into our system here at Civil Maps in our standardized data types. We have an echo here, one second. Um, got that fixed. Um, so whereas last time we were primarily focusing on LiDAR as our topic um, of the four part webinar series, today we're focusing on two other sensors that are combined to create one of our other very important inputs to our localization stack and mapping stack at Civil Maps, which is the IMU, the Inertial Measurements Unit, and GPS, Global Positioning System. Exactly. And we're going to move on with how they work. Cool. Um, so just going over a quick overview of the kind of flow of the presentation here, we're going to go into a quick intro of what IMU and GPS are, kind of high level overview of how they work, um, and then why we use IMU and GPS and what we're looking for in our ultimate uh, output and the fusion of that data, which is an SBET. And an SBET, as I'll get into, is stands for, and John will get into, is um, stands for the smooth best estimated trajectory. And this is a term that at Civil Maps we use literally every day, multiple times a day. Um, yeah. all, all, of our, all of our technical staff is very familiar with using the word SBET all the time. Um, and then we're going to get into how we use IMU and GPS at Civil Maps, um, kind of how we create an SBET, and then um, how we just high level overview of how we get that raw data from our IMU sensor, um, which in our case is a USB IMU. Um, and then we're going to have some Q&A and wrap up the webinar. So, Cool. Um, so I will give a quick recap on Civil Maps uh, software stack. So this is a block diagram. Um, we mentioned this block diagram back in webinar one, so I won't go into details this time. Uh, so the input to our systems are raw data sensors, raw sensor data, like from GPS, from IMU, and from LiDAR, uh, which are later registered into this point cloud through the HAL, which stands for Hardware Abstraction Layer, and the registration process. Later on, we use this point cloud to do our six dimensional localization and 3D semantic mapping extraction, um, which later on get translated into our product, which is the augmented reality maps and the context for autonomous driving vehicles. So let's dive into a little bit more uh, into the from sensor and mounting to the point cloud. Yeah. So um, to create a uh, point cloud, we need individual LiDAR scans, and we need the aspect from that same chip. So aspect um, is actually a sequence of aspect points. Each aspect point has a time information, x, y, z information, and also omega phi kappa. Omega phi kappa are orientations we define the um, with respect to X, Y, Z axis rotations uh, using right hand rule. So we got our aspect from IMU and GPS and together with mounting information, we can register the point cloud. Um, we've been talking about IMU all the time, but what is IMU actually? Um, IMU stands for Initial Measurement Unit. It's a collection of a lot of MAP sensors, including accelerometers, gyroscopes, magnetometer, and barometers. So we use acceler accelerometers to collect acceleration values in X, Y, Z axis, and we use gyroscope and magne magnetometer to collect orientation information together. So how gyroscope, how gyroscope works is that um, gyroscopes has a uh, spinning wheel, and if the uh, if you can see the mouse. So the, if the wheel is spinning fast enough, 
the orientation of this spinning wheel is independent from the outer frame. So by measuring the stable spinning wheel and the relative rotation of the outer frame, we can measure the current orientation of the unit. And the, mag uh, the magnetometer sort of works like a compass, but it's a 3D measurement. So it measures the relative orientation information with respect to the local Earth's magnetic field vector. So we assume, if we assume the local Earth's magnetic vector is parallel to the ground, we can also measure the tilt angle. So that's why it's a little bit different than the compass to make it 3D. And also the barometer is, user, is used to measure the air pressure. Uh, in general, when the elevation goes up, the air pressure drops down. So by utilizing the relationship between the air pressure and the elevation, we can use the barometer to estimate our current elevation. So with all these sensors together, the IMU is able to give you both translation and also angular measurements. So, so I'm going to get into um, a few concepts with GPS that are important to know. Uh, most of you are probably familiar with the use of GPS to some degree, whether that's you know in a car navigation system or on your phone or anything that we use in the modern day on our smartphones probably uses GPS. Um, one important concept of GPS is the frame of reference and how we define where we are on Earth. There's many different standards for doing so. Um, and we use the UTM horizontal reference frame and what's called the WGS84 ellipsoidal vertical reference frame. Um, the ellipsoidal reference frame basically models the Earth. Um, well, I guess I should back up and say the Earth, for that matter, is not a perfect circle as we often think of it. It's actually a very complex shape because of deep valleys and very high mountains that we have. Um, the shape of the Earth is, a com is what's known as a complex uh, geoid and there's a whole field of study dedicated to just measuring that. Um, another model for how the Earth is based on the mean sea level all throughout the oceans and underneath the continents is basically as an ellipsoid, as a simple ellipsoid. And ellipsoidal models um, basically measure your height above or below that ellipsoid, which is tracking the mean sea level at any given location. Um, and therefore your height above or below that ellipsoid is kind of the reference frame that we use from a altitude and elevation standpoint. Um, for UTM measurements for our horizontal datum, we divide the Earth up into 60 different zones. And as you can see with us here in California, we're in zone 10. Um, a lot of our data is in zone 10, but we have data from many different zones for that matter. And um, each of these zones can be basically thought of as an independent grid and your location, XY location within that grid is unique only to that grid. So you need to know the specific UTM zone that you are in. Otherwise, the coordinates that you're, that you're dealing with, um, if, you, if you don't know your UTM zone, will not be unique. So one factor that is definitely makes your location information unique is which UTM zone you're located in. So that's often an input that we need to pay attention to in our GPS data. Mm -hmm. 